Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Bernadette Wagner. I'm here with our Prime Time for Women's Mindful Monday segment. It's my pleasure to welcome Kelly Llewellyn to our program today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, last Friday's 2020 LeaderCast Women Ripple Effect Simulcast Conference. It was an amazing event, and um, I'm excited to have Kelly share her perspective, her takeaways, and what she found most meaningful. Most of all, Kelly, I'm looking to hear how you are going to carry this forward and be a ripple in your community and a leader among women in your role. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me here today. I'm very excited to be part yeah. of the show. Great, great. Well, uh, Kelly, first for our viewers, maybe you could uh, talk a little bit about what you do. Okay. Um, so by daytime, I'm a nurse. Um, by evening time, I'm a mom to a 12 year old that we homeschool. Um, and I'm a wife and I'm a student myself. I'm a parish nurse. So I carry quite a full plate. So this uh, idea of women taking on a lot of different roles and defining them came up in the conference a lot of times. Um, let me just tell our viewers that we had a, a local um, MC, Andy Overton, what, did a great job of setting up the stage. And we heard from Bonnie St. John, Randy Zuckerberg, Tiffany Dufu, uh, Tiffany Dufu, Stephanie Mehta, and Rada Argual. And these women um, all had a different take, uh, but a, a, a set in some, oh, and Abby Wambach, I almost forgot Abby. Uh, <laughs> of course. I forget her. Um, <laughs> Uh, on how we as women uh, can step into our leadership roles, but also how we can take care of ourselves. Because if we don't do that, then we can't lean. So um, why don't we start uh, with uh, Kelly, you telling me, uh, what did what was your overall takeaway from the conference? So my overall takeaway, I think, was that we can be leaders in whatever role we're in. We don't have to have the title of leader, um, so I thought that was really important. I also thought it was important when they talked about not being afraid of failure, because I think so many times that that holds all of us back in different ways. Um, and not being afraid to fail, I think that's definitely something that I take away as a mom, um, being a leader to my daughter, showing her what to expect out of life and how to go get um, what you want out of life. Um, and also not being afraid to step out of our comfort zones, because that's definitely something I struggle with a lot. <laughs> um, but that's important, and that's where we growth occurs, and we know that. So I took away that from each of those different women in the way that you mentioned that they each do it individually in their own worlds, um, which are very different from each other. I love that uh, Abby Wambach said, um, failure is fuel. And I think it was uh, Tiffany Dufu who said, it becomes a spark plug uh, for creativity. So this idea that uh, we all hold back because we're afraid of failure, we might be robbing ourselves of that energy to do something different the next time. Absolutely. And I think hearing that from success, what I consider successful women, right, weren't afraid to fail. Um, it's just more fuel for my fire to, to do things that I wouldn't normally feel comfortable with because if I fail, so what? It's been a learning opportunity. I'll gain something out of it. And why let that um, fear of failure hold me back? And I think so oftentimes with women, we do that. I've had many times people say, well, why would you do that? You, you have so much on your plate. What if you fail? Well, what if I fail? It's not the end of the world. And it could it's not be the end of the world. <laughs> and it could um, be that uh, spark for the next creative idea. Absolutely. Well, I, I liked um, that Bonnie St. John, who is a world-class Olympic um, gold medalist, the first African-American woman to ever um, get an, a medal at the Winter Olympics, had this story where she was talking, and she, she only has one leg. She had a leg amputated as a child. And uh, she time traveled, she said, back to the hospital to speak to some kids who were at the same hospital where she had her surgery and where she recovered. And she said it was both frightening and exhilarating to be there. Uh, I love the story when a, a young mother came up to her and said, my son has burns over 70 some percent of his body. Can he lead a normal life? And her reply was, why lead a normal life? Lead an exceptional life. He can aim higher. 
And for me, I took that away for all of us, for every person on the planet, that we don't have to just look to be normal and fit in a box. We can expand those boundaries. And, you know, I don't know. I, I was just wondering if that story touched you in the same way it touched me. Absolutely. And Brenda, I wrote down notes as I listened to each speaker on Friday. And that was one of the things that I wrote down to aim higher. Right. Um, and again, I think sometimes we're, we're afraid of that, that because we're going to grow outside the box, that that's going to be seen as something negative. Um, so no, absolutely. That aim higher, when she talked about going back to the floor, I thought back when I first became a nurse, I was assigned as a brand new nurse to work on a floor that my dad had been on when he was still alive years ago and was sick. And talk about a scary experience as a brand new nurse going back to a place where it had, kind of had bad memories for me. Um, sure. But I'll tell you, those memories and doing that experience made me grow so much as a brand new nurse. So I think that it was good that she recognized that, recognized that that doesn't have to be a bad thing, that we can grow from places like that. Um, and it's sometimes not bad to go back to places that were scary once upon a time for us. So that really touched me. So um, I, I, I know I want to try to hear about each of the women. Was there anything else from um, Body St. John that you jotted down or that you wanted to share? I loved when she said, who is fighting for you and who are you fighting for? So that was one of the takeaways I talk, took from her is, as a mom, I always want to fight for my daughter, but I want to fight for her more than just being a mom. I want to make sure that I fight for people that want to continue to fight for her as she grows up into being a woman and grows up to be independent. So um, those two things really hit home for me. Who's fighting for me? Who wants me to succeed? Who wants to help me move forward with my um, goals in life? Um, and then who else am I fighting for? Am I fighting for other women? Am I fighting for young girls as they grow up and to empower them more than um, where they're at currently? Yeah, I loved, uh, she talked about um, at one time working with Susan Rice, who was at the White House, and she shared this story on the women's amplification strategy. And she talked about women being at a table, and especially if there's not many women in the room, uh, maybe a woman would say, and I did have this experience when I was on the school board, um, <laughs> I was at a meeting with the county commissioners and I can remember saying something and nobody responded. And then like 10 minutes later, uh, one of my male colleagues said something and they were a great idea, great idea. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? I said that 10 minutes ago, but I didn't say that. But um, she was saying that she and Susan Rice developed the strategy and I would encourage every woman uh, to practice this. Uh, this idea that if you're in a room and you hear some a woman say a good, uh, an idea, if it's not recognized, but later a male says it, go back and say, oh yeah, I remember when uh, you know Kelly said that 10 minutes ago. Hey Kelly, could you speak a little bit more to that? Open that space for that woman to step in and expound on their idea, to be recognized for putting that idea forward. It's, uh, I, I think it's important that we don't see ourselves as competing with men, but that we own our own good ideas. And um, I didn't know if that resonated with you or not. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Very much so. And I think when you were talking about who are you fighting for and who are you fighting or who's fighting for you, um, Bonnie St. John made a big distinction between sponsors and mentors. And so I did want to let our viewers know that you can uh, join LeaderCast now and see this whole conference. So that's an option if you're interested in hearing more in depth what Kelly and I are talking about today. So uh, Kelly, uh, maybe um, we can also talk a little bit just about um, if you heard anything specific from uh, Randy Zuckerberg that you love that you want to share. She was awesome. She was one of my favorite speakers, I think. Um, she talked about the idea. <laughs> <laughs> she talked about the idea of picking three, um, picking three things that you want to work on each day or that you're going to focus most of your attention on. Um, and that really resonated with me. She mentioned the idea of being well lopsided. And I felt like that was so perfect for my life right now because it, I, I don't always have the perfect balance played every day. And there's areas each day that fall to the wayside and they just don't happen. Um, so kind of mentally thinking about each day, what are my three areas of focus gonna be for each day? Because they are different depending on the day. On a Saturday when I have to write a big paper for the upcoming weekend, school becomes a big part of my focus. And so my exercise might slack off and maybe I'm not the best mom that day, but then maybe the next day when I've written the paper, it's done, then I can be a, 
better mom that day. Um, and out of anything, I think that that's teaching young women that we can, we can have it all and we can do it all. We just can't do it all every day, all the time. Right. right. <laughs> so. And I, so she said, um, you know, pick, there's five things that really matter in most people's lives, work, sleep, family, friend, and fitness. Pick three of those and focus on them. Um, I think that it was interesting that she said, you don't have to have the same three things every day. Um, and that kind of gives us uh, permission maybe one day just to sleep in and that's a kind of self-care. <laughs> or maybe the self-care is exercising. Or maybe the self-care is saying to everybody, I need two hours to work on this paper that you're talking about. And that that doesn't have to be seen as a negative. It can be seen as permission to nurture where you are at that moment. And I, I loved that part. It was one of, I wrote that down as well too. Um, two other things that she said, uh, in addition to a well-balanced, well versus a well-lopsided life, she said, embrace being uncomfortable and, um, also, uh, there are 10 years of grit and perseverance and hard work in every success. And I actually, when I heard that, I, I had two thoughts, but one of them was, well, if you're raising a child, it's 18 years, <laughs> but you never stop worrying, even when they're 35 or 37 or whatever. Uh, but I, I did like, we all have this idea, I'm going to do this and we're going to be a success. But she said, nothing is that. It's all at least 10 years. So that's good to keep in mind. Absolutely. How about, uh, what did you take away from Tiffany Dufu that you'd like to share? So um, with her, I think she said to do something you've never done you, to get to where you've never been before. So we are gonna have to do things. If we wanna move forward and we have goals that we wanna go and achieve, we are gonna have to do things that we've never done before. Um, and that kind of relates to what she was saying and also Randy about not being afraid of ideas and sometimes having our best ideas that we never share with anybody because we're afraid that they're going to be rejected. Um, I actually yesterday told my husband to order her book. So I'm excited for, um, <laughs> yes, it order this for me from Amazon. So I'm excited to read her book. I read, um, Abby Wambach's book over the weekend myself. Um, so I just thought that she was super inspired. Well, I'm just going to hold this book up. We'll get to Abby in a minute. But <laughs> this is going to be the book club for prime time uh, for women's discussion in January. So if you uh, want to join us, um, if you're watching this clip, uh, we're, we're going to have it both by, uh, I think we'll just be doing it by Zoom um, in January because we can't meet outside at the park. But um, please uh, check out Prime Time for Women and uh, join us for that book club. Um, I liked that uh, Tiffany had, she said, purpose drives productivity and diversity improves creativity. And this idea that if you have a strong purpose, you're going to be far more uh, productive and effective and efficient. And as you um, garner more support from different people from different locations, that just drives the creativity because you're looking at more perspectives. And I just thought that that was really, really powerful. Um, but she, she did this whole thing with drop the ball. And um, I'm, I'm just going to real quickly uh, say that some of the draw balls that she, she talked about being a competitive person and not ever wanting to drop. I could picture her juggling as she was talking. And um, I actually learned how to juggle when I was a teenager because my mom was trying to do it. And I thought, she can do it. I can do it. I'm, look how competitive I am. Isn't that terrible? But um, it, it's, it is hard to keep all those balls in the air. But she said that she got to the point where she said to herself, I'm not going to drop the ball by mistake. I'm going to let them fall on purpose. And Kelly, uh, she talked about a couple different balls. One was, who am I supposed to be? Uh, what, uh, um, what, uh, what, was, what, is, what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? Um, and um, what was the other one? Uh, how, how am I supposed to cultivate a crew to help me? That, they were the three that I took away. Did you have any feelings about which balls you would drop? <laughs> I think sometimes it's who we're supposed to be based on what other people's perceptions are of who we're supposed to be. Or well, maybe what we tell ourselves too. Right. And so when we start getting these ideas that might seem crazy of who we do want to be, we have to let the ball drop on what other people think we should be and who we should be. Um, she also mentioned about um, managing guilt 
which is so real for women. Yeah. Um, if I'm focusing on something today, then am I feeling guilty that I dropped, you know, did drop the ball on something else? And I think not feeling guilty when we drop the ball intentionally. Like right. what a concept, like intentionally, you know. I'm not dropping the ball, I'm setting it down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I, I did that I, on purpose. That wasn't a failure. I did that on purpose. I dropped the ball. Um, yeah, yeah, she was she was awesome. She had lots of really good I actually thought too, to if I could take that and tie it in with Randy Zuckerberg's pick three, like I could drop, let two balls drop today. <laughs> and maybe I would let two other balls drop tomorrow. <laughs> but it, it was that idea that you have, con it gives us control and power over our own lives. Uh, we're not living into somebody else's expectations. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, of course, didn't want to miss talking about Stephanie Mehta or um, Abby Wambach. Um, let's real quickly touch on Stephanie Mehta and then we'll, uh, we'll finish up with Abby Wambach. Was there anything in particular that um, you wanted to share from her, her presentation? So from Stephanie, um, I think when she was talking about leaders, she said that empathy is a non-negotiable. Um, yeah. I wrote that down too. Skill, right? <laughs> um, and and I have felt that in my world, um, and very That's much appreciate. Sure. So I think that that gives you something to want to pass forward. Mm -hmm. um, she also talked about crisis is followed by an intense period of creativity, um, and we have definitely seen that in the world. How you know different manufacturers that are manufacturing one thing one day could go manufacture masks the next day. They could totally step up to the plate and do that. Um, so I really enjoyed hearing her um, and just hearing her talk about flexibility. I think flexibility is so key um, in our lives, in our careers, in our personal lives, just being flexible, um, especially with the world that we're living in today. I mean, so we have, you have to be flexible from hour to hour, it seems. You started off saying, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a nurse, and you go through all these roles, um, but it's really... Uh, if you can be a leader in all those and be flexible, it's another way of giving ourselves permission to direct attention where it needs most and where it also nurtures us. Um, yeah, so I, I thought that was good too. Uh, so she said leaders, um, new rules of leadership, uh, empathy is non-negotiable, new, new normal leadership is flexible, new normal leadership has a North Star or a purpose. How important is that? I'm, I know it's really important to you as a mom, but how important is having a, a, a purpose and direction in your work as a nurse, uh, especially the outreach you do through the parish nurse? How, how does that sense of purpose drive you as a leader? I'll tell you that that is something that when I took one more roles, when I went back to school a couple months ago, I had to really real think about what were things that were still important to me, even though I was taking on all these other responsibilities. Um, and my parish nurse work was definitely one of those things. I was in a class last month for being a parish nurse. And um, I really, I, I, I carved out that time. I think it just forces you to carve out time for things that are important that also fill your cup, right? We can't continue to give to other people if we end up with an empty cup ourselves. Um, so I think that that has really been important. Um, to, focusing on goals and realizing that you can still do all these other things ultimately with your goal. Um, my nursing goal right now is school. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that's kind of my North Star right now. Right. <laughs> um, but, but I haven't dropped the ball on everything else. It's just I pick up different balls, as you mentioned, different days of the week. Um, and I, and I carve out those times for things that are important so that I can continue to focus on the things that are important to me um, while still doing taking care of all the things that some days aren't as important. Yeah, I can't remember which one of the ladies, uh, the speakers said, said this, but they talked about Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the things, it, uh, one of the suggestions that he gives is to really define your purpose in life by asking yourself, and this might be a little morbid, but it's a really good exercise. What do you want your friend, your family, your colleagues, your spouse, your children, uh, your siblings, uh, whatever role you're in, uh, what do you want them to say at your funeral? Because it, it, it forces you to say, gosh, I'm not gonna be here. How am I gonna be remembered? So then you back that up and you backtrack and you map out to get to where 
this is what people will say about me. And I just thought that was both morbid and really interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting way to lead our life forward. Um, and, to, and to really, it really does kind of make you focus on what, what really is important in life and all the other stuff that's just noise um, right. to kind of push that aside. Um, because there's a whole lot of noise that can come into our lives each and every day. And standing up for yourself and saying I'm pushing that away to the side because that doesn't mean anything to me at the end of the day it's just always really focused on what's important. Just yesterday women uh, prime time for women um, along with Girls Who Hike hosted a Grandma Gatewood legacy hike and we had 23 women hike a section of the uh, a little over seven miles section of the Appalachian Trail uh, in honor of this woman Grandma Gatewood uh, who hiked was the first through hiker of the Appalachian Trail, and she was 67 years old when she did it the first time. But it was interesting to be on this hike uh, because we were on a trail, so you you are socially distanced, but people are talking at the same time. One of the things that I heard that came up over and over again was this idea of taking time for ourselves. And I felt like yesterday was an extended, we left at nine in the morning and we hiked and we went to the cliffs and we sat there and we chatted and, you know, you can see our pictures on Facebook, but um, the idea was we, I thought, I think every woman there carved some time for herself, but at the same time, when you're carving uh, time for yourself, there was connection going on. And I think that that's like so super important for leaders to remember that they don't have to do it alone, that they need help. And somebody, I think it was um, Heard that. <laughs> Bonnie St. John said something about you got to learn to be helpable. And I didn't even know yes. helpful was a word, but <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> right. I loved it. <laughs> so how about Abby Wambach? What did you think of her presentation? She was awesome. I think when I learned about LeaderCast initially, I heard that she was going to be one of the speakers. And, and I don't come from a sports background, but my husband is a big soccer fan. And so I knew her name just through conversations with him. Um, and so that was one of the things that definitely brought me to LeaderCast. Um, and I had actually gotten her kid book um, before the LeaderCast started because I figured I might want my daughter to read it. So I wanted to read it first. So that was the version actually that I read over the weekend. Um, she just said so many awesome things, leading from the bench, right. um, <laughs> using, um, she talked about decisions, handle, you know, dictating how we handle bad decisions is really important. Um, and so that was, um, that really stuck with me. Um, I felt like her, um, her concentration on teamwork and saying that um, you know, you can lead from the bench. You don't have to be on the front line. But also that um, teams are successful, not because they all have the same strength, but because they overlap strengths. And it doesn't, you don't have to. So that means I don't have to be like you uh, and get your exact same strength. And you don't have to be exactly like me. But what we have to do is find a way to collaborate, connect, support, empower, encourage each other. And then our strengths will overlap to create this great, um, you know, amplification of female leadership. And I thought that was really, really great. The other part I really liked, she talked about um, championing, championing each other. That's a hard word to say. Uh, and she said that if you do that, it actually minimizes jealousy. So instead of competing against other women, compete with women, other women, and lift each other up. And I just, I, I, I found that um, so true to prime time for women's mission. So for me, that was a big connection. I'll tell you, after um, hearing Abby, I, I, I sent out a group text message to my fellow students that I'm in the cohort with. And I laughed because she had said pain is, um, pain is better when you share it with somebody. Right, right. She did say that. <laughs> and so I texted them and I said, this pain that we're going through is so much better because there's 10 other people that I'm going through it with and we can kind of commiserate, but yet we can also support and encourage each other. And that little group that we've been together for about 11 weeks now has gotten so bonded because we're kind of sharing this pain of being adult learners with all these other responsibilities and going through this program together. Um, but as soon as she said that, I thought of them, and I was like, I have to send them a message right now and tell them, like, thank you for 
make, not making me go through this by myself. Like, I'm glad that I was assigned to this group with this group of people. And, you know, and, and that was so true. Um, years but, ago, you know, just, just doing that, sending out that text was the whole purpose of this um, simulcast, which is to be, have a ripple effect, to take what you've learned and to share it, to be that pebble in the pond that sends out the ripples. And there you are, the conference isn't right? over yet and you're texting and <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's great, that's perfect. I'm so glad you did that. Yeah, that definitely resonated with me um, for sure. But she was just inspiring and I loved how she took the lessons that she learned in soccer and applies them to life now. Right. Off the soccer field. and. And she's not just Abby, the, she's no longer, I should say, Abby, the soccer player. She's Abby, the the advocate and Abby, you know. The author, Abby, the oldest mom. Speaker. And, yeah, and a mom and everything, yep. Absolutely, and I think it's easy sometimes to let our careers define who we are um, and to realize that we can just use these as learning lessons and stepping stones someday for when we aren't in the roles that we're in currently. So I thought that was really important. Um, and I, I loved I, her her kids version of the book that I read over the weekend. It was great. It was great for kids. Um, so great for adults. <laughs> for, right. <laughs> My daughter was like, "You read that book already?" And I was like, "Yeah, it was an easy read." Um, and I can't wait for her to read it. I can't wait to share that with her in the upcoming months. Well, Kelly, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule with all those roles that you have and sharing your experience with us. Um, and I know that uh, you're going to continue to be uh, create a ripple effect in your life as a mom and as a nurse and as a parish nurse and as a spouse and a daughter. So thank you so much for being a part of Prime Time for Women's Mindful Monday. And uh, viewers, take it. If you uh, like what Kelly had to say, please make sure you share this video and help us uh, be part of the ripple effect that supports and empowers and encourages all women. Kelly, thanks so much. I'll see you later. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.